Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? God, good to see some smiling faces. Boy, and the year ain't done good for some of you. No. <laughs> Uh, no, all right. First off, I'd, I'd just like to, again, thank everyone for being here. It's uh, really hard to believe that uh, we are right back at it, uh, get, getting ready to tip off uh, year 13 uh, for me and for Steph uh, here at Louisville. Uh, you know, when you sit back and you think about it and you start thinking about 13 years, it, it's hard. It, it's hard to uh, stay someplace 13 years and sustain what we've been able to sustain. And we're excited about it. We have a great group of young women. We have a lot of new faces, which is going to be a little bit of a challenge for us from the get-go. Uh, I talked to our team a week ago, and I explained to them, if you're trying to go from 1 to 10 in the terms of your ball club, we'd started at 5 the past few years because we'd had so many returning players. Now, with so much new, we're probably starting at 2. But I still think our end goal is 10. So that's one, one thing you will see throughout this first few weeks. You'll probably see some changes within our starting lineup. Uh, I'll be tinkering with substitution patterns, trying to figure out what's best for our team. As we worked with last year, Dana started the first few games, brought AC off the bench, and then realized that wasn't what was best for our team put AC into the starting lineup, brought Dana off the bench because Dana changed the tempo of the game for us. When we brought her in, things changed. The speed of the game changed. Her defensive ability on the ball changed. So we're going to have to figure that out as we go this year. But overall, really, really excited about what the, po the possibilities are. I will tell you that Naya Green and Romani Parker will both redshirt th this year. Uh, sat down with both of them and, and talked to them. They, they, they both done extremely well, uh, but we had a lot of unforeseen circumstances that came, came about since, since their signing. You've seen Diop tears an ACL last year in game three. So now we appeal for a six year, she gets a six year. Our two transfers from Georgia Tech, Elizabeth ba Balagoon and Liz Dixon, both become eligible. Both of these young uh, ladies would play as freshmen, but it's a matter of how much. So after sitting down and talking with them and saying, hey, what are your goals? Both of them said they want to be great. So I said, hey, you're going to get a lot more reps playing with the scout team throughout the year every single day and plus individual work than getting a rep every two or three times with the group that's fighting for rotation. So they both agreed. They're both excited about it, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Because it, it, anytime you can get an opportunity to, to redshirt players of that, of that caliber to give them a year of training, weight training, skill work, it's only going to benefit us down the road. So those two, so when we're out there playing tomorrow night, they're going to have the option to warm up if they want. They'll still be able to travel with us, uh, as Molly Lock, uh, Lockhart did this past year. So they'll be able to go on all road trips. I, I just won't put them in the games. Uh, Kiana Smith, on the uh, other hand, will not travel with us because she's a traditional transfer ha having to sit out a year. So she'll be at all of our home games. Uh, so I just want, 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 want to make sure I put that out there now so tomorrow night when my fans are yelling at me to put them in the game, <laughs> they'll know why. Uh, all right, any, any questions? Yeah. Two talented young ladies and, and ask them to redshirt, is, does it not? No, I mean, it's a huge benefit for us. I mean, and th th this is something, they were actually able to talk to Bianca Dunham about it. Because I had talked to Bianca her freshman year about redshirting. And uh, B was like, I came here to play, not sit. You know, and had a very spirited con conversation, j just the same way she plays. And now she's like, gosh, if I would have redshirted, this could be my junior year. You know? And having someone who has that firsthand experience to be able to talk to them was a huge benefit for us. Because I sit there and I look at it, if Bianca Dunham was a junior right now, she'd be competing to be for a first team all league with another year behind her. Um, but with that experience that she had, 
she was able to talk to the, to those two about what she wished she had done, and they 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 were both in in full agreement. Well, we're going to be able to do a lot. I mean, part, uh, a part of it is we're very fortunate to have talented t kids. It's not like I'm experimenting with somebody that can't play. You know, um, I'm looking at everybody on, on, on this team has the ability to, to, come, to come in, compete, and play. So now it's a matter of trying to figure out where everybody is comfortable. I mean, I go back to, to 2009, Keisha Hines, it was, that basically was our starting center, she never started because she told me she, she didn't like to start. So Gwen, uh, uh, Gwen Rucker started. She played volleyball, then came and played basketball and started for us. So, and Keisha would go in at times after a minute in the game. It was just a mindset. She did not want to start. I was like, hey, whatever works for you. So as this goes, where kids have the most success is where I'm going to try and make sure I put them in there because then when they have success, we'll have success. going to be hard right now. I got too many. Are there too many variables, or is this particular year with this cast more difficult? I think this year, because of having so many new faces, um, I'm expecting Liz Dixon to be an impact for us, Elizabeth Balagoon to be an impact. But it's, it's a big change for them. Um, you know, I kind of joke with them the other day. I think they were 18 and 13 last year in the ACC in, 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 at Georgia Tech. And, you know, I said, you all realize I think you lost more game in, games in one year than we lost the past four combined. You know, so now there's a lot more expectations, uh, you know, which they seem excited about. But at the same time, how are they going to handle it when we step out there tomorrow night and we've got hopefully eight to 10,000? You know, it, I'm a huge believer that there are players that when the lights come on can play. And then I'm a huge believer there are some kids that can flat out dominate in practice. And then all of a sudden, when those lights go on, it's not the same. So there's a few I'm waiting to see how are they going to respond to, uh, uh, to that. Uh, and then you've got J Jasmine Jones. She's really worked hard this offseason. I've really been impressed with her. Uh, Bianca has gotten better. Kylie, Dana. I mean, it's going to be, you know, a lot of the same cast of characters, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to seeing what Mikasa can do, what Sagan can do, you know, Lindsey Duvall, some of ours that, that might not have gotten the amount of playing time that they would have liked to have last year, and now the opportunity is going to be there. Now they've got to embrace it. Has the style of play, is it going to be similar or different? Similar, yeah, except for we won't be thrown at Asia. <laughs> That's one change. Or Sam, yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, we're going to play the same way. We're going to try and get up and down the floor, try to score in transition, try to create things off our defense. Uh, but yes, it, it, it will be the same. Is that more dependent on learning this year, Dan? There's a lot more learning. That's one thing that we have, ta have talked about. That, that's why I, I say we're starting at a two and trying to get to 10, where in the past we've come in here and started at a five. The past two, uh, two years, we could have played a full game the first day of practice. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's learning for us, too. It's, it's learning, try, trying to figure out who do we want to have the ball with 15 seconds to go down one. You know, in the past few years, we knew who that was going to be, at least going to try to make a play, either a shot or get it to somebody who's open. Now, who is that going to be? Is it Dana? Is it Jazz? Is it Elizabeth? And that's what we're going to start, start to find out. Well, I, it, two, two different players. Uh, Ky, Ky, Kylie's never going to be Sam, okay? Uh, Kylie, we're, we're going to need Kylie to do what she can do well, and that's step out and shoot, and shoot, shoot to three. Uh, she's gotten better at scoring around the basket, but she's not going to be someone that's getting in there and banging and knocking so, uh, somebody over like Sam would. You know, and that's what I've, I've always said. We're never going to get another Angel McCautry. Asia Durr, Sh uh, Sh Sh Shoni Schimmel, 
or Sam Fury, Maisha. What I need is I need Carly Shook to be the best Carly Shook that she can be. And for Carly, I think she's got the ability to make two or three threes a game for us and then score in the paint. And if she can do that, then, you know, it would be a big lift for us. You mentioned lineup and possibly changing. How difficult is it to even get one for the first game? Or, and are you set on it yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm set on one for the first game. We'll, look, we'll go with Dana at the point, uh, Elizabeth Balagoon, Jasmine Jones, Bianca, and Liz. Uh, Mikasa would be our first point guard coming off the bench, but right now she's nursing a shoulder. So I, she'll, she'll be a game time d d decision uh, with her ability to play. And then Sagan would probably right now be the backup point guard. And then N Norika would be the first wing that comes off the bench for us. And then. No, it's going to be a good game. D, D, D Givens um, in their center uh, are, are, are two very, very ta talented players. D in her last two games, one was a scrimmage, and then le uh, uh, last year I think she's had a 38 and, tw and 22 against us. Uh, so we know she's very capable of playing. Uh, it's an in-state kid. who th This has got to be exciting for her. Um, and then I've, I've always been impressed with their Egyptian center. Uh, just a bag of tricks, up and under. She never stops <laughs> moving. They're going to look to get the ball up and down the floor, which is one thing that they've done since Greg has been there. And it, it's it, it, it's a good game for us. It's not a simple, we're going to walk down there and win. Um, and that's not what we want. I mean, we, we, we don't want a game that we're just going to show up and win by 20. You know, I want something to find out exactly, you know, where are we at this point in time? And we'll have a few of those as we go through. We've got Murray on Friday, Central Michigan team that's been to the Sweet 16, then a, a Boise State team that comes back. Um, you know, I'm, I like our non-conference schedule because it's challenging. Uh, we've got a lot of mid-majors, per se, that are going to be in the NCAA tournament. And I'm just a big b b believer. If I can't, if we can't win tomorrow night, I'd rather know now than our first ACC game, you know, because our kids, you don't want to give them a whole bunch of false sense of security. So I, I expect a really good basketball game. You're down one with 15 seconds tomorrow. Who gets the ball? Man, it's going to be it, – it, honestly, right now at this point, it will be determined by who's played well. I really think so. Where in the past, you know, if Shoney was 0 for 10, it'd still go to Shoney. Uh, Right now, it'd probably be Dana Jazz. Uh, and if we have an advantage in the post, I'd try and get it into Liz. But it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it, it was fun to watch. I, I think a lot of our fans, I, I, I think they appreciate how good Asia Durr was. But I don't think they realize how difficult some of the shots that, that she made, and she made them look easy, uh, are. Because, you know, our kids, I joke with them all the time that, that they're finding it out. They're like, man, that, that shot she made wasn't as easy as I thought. Uh, but, but, but it's good for them. You know, it's good. A, a, every player, like you watch Lamar in, in the game last night, and I love the an announcers when they're going, well, it looks like a lot of N NFL teams be looking for a quarterback like him. Well, there aren't many out there. I, I hate to break you the bad news, guys. I mean, he makes it look awfully easy. When he turn, 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 turns a corner and you're like, oh, it's going to be a loss of three, and all of a sudden he gains six, it, it's pretty darn impressive. So, you know, player, players like that don't, don't, don't come around all, oh, very, very often. You mentioned last week about Marika off of the court. Is she better now on the court than you could have even imagined? And, and I know you, she's only been here, what, a month now? Two months now, I think. She'd been here about two months. I, I knew we, you know, we had watched her on film, so I obviously knew she was good. But when we scrimmaged them with our U19 team over in Tokyo, when she was a part of the, ja the, the Japanese U19 team, and she scored 18 on us with, I mean, what's considered to be the best uh, under-19 players in the, in the U.S., I, I knew we had a kid that could, could play. She understands the game. I, our, our fan base is going to love her. Uh, just the joy that she plays with, the smile on her face. Uh, I laugh with her all, all the time because she, you know, 
they talk about the, the language barrier, and she's gotten so, so much better. But I just keep asking her, do you know what put the ball in the basket means? <laughs> and she says, yes. I said, that's all I, need. Uh, that's all I need, need you to do. Now, she turned it over a few times in our scrimmage. So I said, do you know what throw the ball to our team means? And, and she, she said yes on that. And then it's been cute, because I asked her the other day, I said, I really want to learn a few J Japanese words for during the game. You know, so if something's going on, I make it easier. And I asked her, what's reverse the ball in Japanese? And she said, reverse the ball. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I've, I've got that down. And then I said, what's shoot? Like, shoot. She goes, shoot. I said, okay, I've, I've got that down too. So my, my Japanese is getting better by the day. <laughs> yep. Now, it's, you guys are going to really enjoy her. And our team, i got to say, our, our team has done a wonderful job of embracing her. Because it's not easy. I mean, you're uh, all international students. There's a big difference if you come from California. And that, that's a long way to come to. But you can get back home on a weekend if you want to. You know, if you have a long weekend, you can get on a flight at 6 a.m. and still get back there by 4. You know, you're there, Saturday, you're there Friday, Saturday, and come back on a red eye on, a, on a, a, a Sunday night if you need to. There is no jumping on a plane back to, to Japan for a long weekend. So our, our, our kids have done a great job of just embracing her and making her feel good. And her personality is the same way. You know, I, I've said it before. After about the first month, I was talking to, to Dana in the office, and I said, hey, how's N Narika doing? Because, you know, she'll always tell me, which I, I, I give her a hard time. When I ask Narika, how are you doing? She just goes, good. A thumbs up and says, good. And I'm like, it can't always be good. Um, but Dana told me, she's like, coach, Narika actually – makes me want to be a better person because of how she treats everyone, how she approaches every single day. And I think that just speaks volumes for the type of, per, uh, of person that she is. So we're looking forward to it. It should be a, a great night tomorrow night. Hopefully everybody get out and vote and then come out and watch us play and uh, just make it a great night. And then cheer on the men too. You know what? We have a sick one at home right now, so we are trying trying to get one on the mend. Uh, but we have not been playing too many board games right now because we're outside. We're we're trying to get outside as much as we can before this cold weather hits, and then we'll figure out what the new game is. Yep. What were you for Halloween? Prince Eric. I was Sorry, Prince Eric. Oh, I was Prince Eric with uh, Ariel and her sister, the mermaids, and then. Do uh, uh, Dolly the dog was, was dressed up as a mermaid also. Oh yeah, we, uh, we toughed it out and we went out for about 45 minutes. It was cold, I'm not gonna lie. I told our mermaids they might freeze. So, but it, it was a great night, a, a lot of fun. Ho hopefully next year we can have some good weather. But I, I really appreciate everybody. Hope, hope to see you all out here tomorrow night. Thank you.